Welcome to another day in the matrix, waters above crypto. As you can see in the title, we're going to talk a little bit about Terra Luna today. So grab your popcorn and get yourself a glass of water for the red pill you're about to swallow. And of course, I'll cover the charts of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Also, a shout out to the Waters Above Wolf Pack over on Patreon. Our mastermind community has been lit over the past couple days since this correction started. Everyone's been so incredible in our Discord while navigating this recent price action in the crypto market. It's really made me proud to see what I've started and how it's developed over the last year. We really have the greatest community in the entire crypto space. Just wanted to show some love to the family before I jumped into this video. I appreciate every single one of you. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out. And make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious beings to help grow this community. And for those of you that want to learn how to do technical analysis and combine it with Gamatria, you can join my mastermind course. The link to my website can be found in the description box of this video and in the pinned comment below for access to the mastermind course. And with that being said, let's take the red pill. So a couple things to bring up. Uh, first and foremost, we have to talk a little bit about distractions and about attention and the coin Terra Luna has actually been the most requested coin to me personally in emails, Patreon messages, Discord, pretty much everything that I'm a part of where I could actually talk to the public or talk to members over on the Mastermind community. And this has been going on pretty much since November of last year, the end of the year of 2021. And I want to open up with this because I feel it's quite important to remember that when everyone is giving their attention to something, it's probably a sign that it's the top. And that's something that I've learned quite a bit in my time being an investor and studying the great investors of our past. See, there's a big difference between investing and gambling, and a lot of the time when people get into cryptocurrency, they want to treat it like this thing where they could just throw some money in and make some money tomorrow and rinse repeat, and they might have one win, and then they think they'll be able to continue that winning streak. It's called hot hand syndrome. It's something that gamblers have, and I study all of this. I study psychology of gamblers. I study psychology of markets. I do all the work, and I've been doing it pretty much 14 to 16 hours a day ever since I actually before I even made a YouTube channel probably going on two two years straight now without pretty much any days off very rarely taking days off I do the work so I make sure that when I'm getting into an investment personally I'm not really trying to time the market necessarily I'm looking at it as a long-term investment thesis and the reason why I want to bring this up is because lately it's been obviously the talk of the town with Terra Luna and UST. I think it's really funny about UST. It's kind of similar to like Ukraine, where no one on the world stage talked about Ukraine up until February of this year. It's like no one gives anything attention until the apex predator starts creating and generating theatrics and drama around it, and then everyone starts giving it their attention. It's pretty amazing. And it even happens in the high vibrational, like truth seeker community, if that's what they want to call themselves. So with that being said, we know what happened with Terra Luna. I'm going to quickly go to this chart. And by the way, like I want to screen cap this chart and get it framed on a portrait on my wall. This is just the most mind blowing single day red candle I've seen on a top altcoin. I think this thing was ranked like in the top five, maybe less than a week ago. So this isn't to joke around. This is just to go through this very thoroughly and to provide people with why all of this is actually happening. So with this being, you know, kind of put in the background regarding how we analyze our portfolios, we know for a fact that in this reality, it's all the Hegelian dialect. It is this order out of chaos kind of problem reaction solution 
And whenever there's the problem arises, the apex predator always has a thing to blame. They always have something to kind of give the public to make them feel like, you know, this is the reason why this devastating chaos is occurring. And in actuality, us that are aware of gematria, numerology, and astrology know that that's complete horseshit. So whenever we're being told the narrative, don't fall for the narrative because the narrative was designed by a group of beings that don't give a shit about you or your money that you have and their job their sole job on this planet is to extract and harvest your energy your attention mostly and that's a very valuable currency so with this being said i believe that we are seeing this happen and it's come to fruition with terra luna in both directions when it was trading at highs back for pretty much you know the last five months it was getting a lot of attention in regards to it being some sort of great opportunity and now that it's fell off the cliff people are freaking out and i will also preface you know with where we're going to go with this to say that if anyone knows my red pill podcasts that i do over on patreon you'll know that this coin is the number one coin that i've singled out the most regarding it not being an opportunity over the last six months anyone who watches the content that i make over on patreon if i ever speak about terra luna i would always be telling people take this chart off of your screen do not look at this chart because seeing a chart that's trading up at these levels that it was at and i'll show you technically this is not an opportunity, okay? It isn't. This is overheated, overextended, and bound for a correction. So just to quickly take you through it, the Fib poll here was from March 2021 down to this selling climax of May 25th. And then you can see that once it got above the 1618, the golden ratio, it quickly zoomed up to the 0.5 Fib extension. This was around the eclipse of December. Now, this eclipse over here in December was really interesting because this was the only coin that was performing well at the time. A majority of everything else was pretty much not performing well. It's really important to remember this. All the other coins were doing really badly, and Luna was an isolated coin that was hitting new all-time highs. Ever since, we've actually seen a double top, this double top coming within the 0.5 fib to the point to the six spot fib extension excuse me and between the five and six fib extension i told everyone adamantly this is not a project you want to be looking at a chart of if you're a new investor this is not an opportunity okay the reason why i was aware of that is because when you have an exit strategy or you know how to actually do technical analysis you'll be aware that anything that's above the four two three six fib spot uh, fib extension is too high Okay, it's bound for some sort of corrective action. And when it gravitated to the 1618, clearly this was a ritual because it followed up by, you know, pretty much 90% losses in less than 48 hours. Okay, so from top to bottom, where we're at now, even where we're trading at now, which is a pretty respectable bounce, is 98% down from the all-time high. And if you were to take from here all the way down to the wick, you're looking at about a full 99.5% loss from all-time high. This means that anyone who is in a leverage long on this is 100% liquidated. There's no possibility to not be. Um, so this was a ritual right? The name of this video is the Terra Luna Ritual on purpose because this is what it is. It's a very isolated extreme event where they're going to give you a narrative. They're going to talk about UST and, you know, all this extra shit. And none of that matters, guys. It doesn't. It literally does not. What's the problem here is when it was up at these levels, people were giving it all this attention, okay? What people should be doing is giving things attention after big corrections, not giving it attention when it's up at the top thinking it's an opportunity and now that it's in the process of falling like a falling knife trying to catch this bottom no one knows when this will stop on this individual coin so i'm going to do a couple things to perhaps bring some light to what's happening here maybe this could help maybe people will glaze over this doesn't really matter to me but we were pretty adamant about this five fib extension up to six fib extension being a big double top pattern after a massive surge of liquidity all the way since the c word all the way up to top we're looking at a a beautiful amount of gains on this coin i mean really give this coin its flowers 63 63 000 percent gains 
that's just mind blowing and very, very, uh, this probably could have made many, many millionaires with a small amount of money. Now, where this is getting interesting is how this is going to create a lot of conspiracy theories. A lot of people are going to start to talk about how stable coins are going to get regulated now, this, that, and the third. I'm open-minded to all of that, by the way, but you're going to see now, this is very similar to the SEC thing that happened with Ripple. It's going to start generating a lot of exterior ideas. People are going to start coming up with all these new ways of analyzing how, you know, the stable coin uh, tokenomics are and all this stuff. And rightfully so, because if you were a big holder of this, you want to know the reason why it happened. You don't want to just accept it being an overheated project that's equalizing. So where it's equalized to is actually around where a lot of the other altcoins are trading. If you look at a lot of other altcoin charts, you can see this was the structure back in the summertime of 2021. And most coins have break and broken the bottom structure. For all we know, Terra Luna could be back at $13, $15 in a week. I'm not saying it will, but this is how this market acts. It shakes out as many retail as possible. And then the people who print the money, which are the central banks and the Federal Reserve and, and all countries that are tied into this parasitic system, they have billions, if not trillions of dollars in reserves where they could buy all of the fucking crypto they want and push up the market cap or slam it down in whatever direction they would like. The, the narrative behind how it happened, irrelevant. So let's kind of just consider a couple things here. For one, we know that this back here was an eclipse of December 2021. Recently, we just had an eclipse on May 30th, or excuse me, April 30th, and we have an eclipse coming up in about four days. So it's like a yin-yang. You know, there was the highs on the eclipse, and now it's washed out into the extreme lows on this, up, this eclipse that we're kind of sandwiched within right now. So this is obviously very isolated, but let's consider some things. First and foremost, we know today, being the 11th, going back to the start of Shemitah is going to be four days, eight months, and this Luna giving us 48. So there's one connection here into specifically today with this 84 and 48. And because this has the 15 and that is tied to the tiger and we're in the year of the tiger, and everything that has this 15 tied to it has been unlucky. We saw what happened with Metaverse and, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals. It was how we were able to determine the Super Bowl. So now that we're seeing Luna with this 15, it's it's there's definitely something there, especially the fact that it's matching up exactly in the Chaldean cipher. So we are moving into a lunar eclipse. This is one thing to consider. Lunar eclipse giving us 135 in English ordinal and the date of the lunar eclipse starting on the 15th into the 16th will be the 135th day of the year. Again, matching the 135. And you can see right here, May 15th, 16th, total lunar eclipse. Luna is the moon. The moon is getting eclipsed. So this is really interesting. And also, Terra is the mother earth. And in Roman mythology, it's Terra, but in Greek mythology, more popularly known, it's Gaia. So just remember that this project is literally called Mother Earth Moon, or <laughs> Moon and Earth together. There's a lot going on there when you think about the astrology. So those of you that are astrologers, go, you know, analyze this further. One other note about today is this the 13 date numerology. In tarot, this, the 13th card is the death card. So again, another connection for sure. It's the 131st day of the year, which is the 1-3 and the 1-3 mirrored as one. So that's really interesting to consider as well. So I'm just kind of freestyling here, but I'm showing you some of the things to consider. Now, one thing regarding extreme price targets to the downside, which who knows, because this wick is getting ferociously bought up. I mean, we're at like 200% up on this wick. But if we zoom out and have the entirety of this trading range and we go to the VPVR, the POC, it's going to come in right there around that 50 cent level into if I zoom in a little bit closer, it's going to be around that 48 cent level. And that 48 is really interesting because it will be Luna. So I don't know if it'll go that low because we already had the 
touch of 68 cents. So 68 cents was right here into this cluster. And this cluster right there was the last cluster before it went just up in a straight line. So the fact that it cascaded through these whole all of these levels is not weird because there was really no trading volume in any of that area. When you see me zoom out all the way, you see how thin the volume profile is. There's really nothing going on between here and all the way sub one dollar so it just back tested this wick key level here on this top i remember this area like the back of my hand because it was when i was really really getting into developing my mastermind course so after this c word crash and this flat line this is when i started investing into all of my ethereum bitcoin and my xrp position so again, I have my Bitcoin at 7,000 or so dollars. All of my Ethereum was like in the 200 to 400 range and all of my XRP was under 20 cents. So I have de-risked about a year ago in most of my biggest positions, actually around the time that I made my YouTube channel. So whenever people were talking to me about Terra Luna, I'm looking all the way back at it and I was seeing it at 18 cents and I was seeing where it developed to. And I knew that this was an unsustainable pump. Now, I think this would be healthy for luna investors and i'm just saying this now to be a grown-up to be mature to really tell you from the eyes of a technical analyst what would be healthy is this thing to build trading range around 150 to two dollars for like a while because these cascading events happen when there's no structure there was no structure in this chart look at it i mean it anyone who does ta you would know this is easy to make this cascading liquidation because there is no structure. With Bitcoin, it's obviously the hardest. With Ethereum, it's the second hardest. And then everything else, it's kind of just like it's up in the air because there's no support in all those other altcoins, especially things like SHIB. And, you know, the lower cap stuff is really risky. It's prone to this because there's no support and there's very little chart history. So again, those that are experiencing lots of pain in their portfolios it's typically because you build portfolios that are a they're based around coins that are way too exciting at the time where they're doing really well and b you're not you're not in coins that are you know proofed from big liquidation events like this so structurally we could see there's a huge difference between something like this and ethereum look at ethereum See, this is the C word. This is that top that I, that Luna just retested. If we look and compare, this top right here is where, if you consider this ETH versus Luna, this is where uh, we're looking at mm, 60 cent Luna, all the way down at 491 ETH. But look at the structure we have here. It's literally, it's beautiful. In all of this bearish price action, we're seeing this hold structure. So the stock market just opened moments ago. There's really not a whole lot of TA to do on what's happening right now. We know that we're kind of skating on thin ice, but I wanted to come out and share that information with you guys today because I thought this would be an interesting and eye-opening you know, experience into how these coins could act and why this last eclipse Luna hit all-time highs while everything else was doing bad. And recently on this eclipse, we see one of the biggest ritualized alt, you know, altcoin moments in the history of cryptocurrency. I mean, all things considered, this was a legendary wipeout. So with Bitcoin, I actually shared this chart over on Patreon, and I'm not going to talk about it a whole lot because it would take a lot of time into the video, but I made this chart, and it's a very experimental chart. I shared it on my Patreon yesterday. For those members of the Mastermind community that missed it, that's available to you. You just got to go over to my Patreon account. For those of you that are new to my work and you're interested in this chart and me explaining it, you could go over and check it out. Essentially, there is a downsloping line of support, and we've seen about over 450 days of trading range. 80% of the time, Bitcoin has traded above this range. And then we have the arrows at the bottom showing you a retest of the same support line somewhere around 29k today bitcoin dug into 29,000 on the nose okay and then again a bounce again two thousand dollar bounce in short order is the correction over nobody knows it would be more than likely though after a back test of this trend line and also a back test of this horizontal support level around 29,000, it's more than likely we experience a bounce 
And when I was taking the average bounce target and the average amount of days that it took from bouncing on this trend line, we would end up somewhere around the first week of June getting back towards 40K. If this decouples from all of this right here and starts breaking and closing daily candles below 28K, then this can slide probably back to 19, probably 22 to $19,000. And that would be a back test of the prior all-time high from 2017. So keep that in mind. I mean, that is possible. And that's something we have talked about here before. The possibility of just a wipeout. The timing of it was more expected towards probably September, October, but the fact that we have eclipses right now is not a confusing thing to anyone who's part of my community, at least. We've been through these eclipses before. We went through the one in May last year. We went through the one at the end of the year in November, December, and here we are again. We see that they're a highly energetic moment for the cryptocurrency sector. It could create lots of uncertainty, lots of fear, especially if it's to the downside. And this is what's necessary to wipe out the gamblers from this market. So let's come full circle to the beginning of this video. I stated there's a huge difference between investors and gamblers. The ones who are gambling are panic selling right now. They're losing their minds. They're freaking out. They don't know the reason why this is actually happening. So they're blaming it on the narrative that the mainstream media gives them. The people that are here that have been along for this ride over here in the waters above community, you're aware it's about astrology. These eclipses are massively important. And when you take into account this year out of all years, the Shemitah, you knew that these moments were bound to happen. When they happen during the year doesn't really matter. They're bound to happen. So what that means is this is the year to not mess around with your finances. And this has been a warning ad nauseum. I've brought it up in my exit strategy blueprint quite a bit, actually. And this idea of securing finances, focusing on financial security, not financial freedom. Financial freedom is what makes people greedy. And if you're greedy, you have the love of money. Okay? The love of the money is the problem. When you just accept the money for what it is, that's not the same. But Human beings who worship money are very greedy, and they're always seeking the chart to go higher. They're always getting upset when the chart goes lower, and they're tethering their emotions to the portfolio and to the market behavior. If you continue to do that, you're going to be sad most of the most of the time because the bear markets or the quote unquote recessions are much longer than the bull runs. The amount of time the market trades sideways and down is a lot longer than the time that it moves up. So it's very important to be just focused on de-risking right now, not getting, you know, overly emotional. Don't let this market steal your energy. Focus on yourself, focus on your business, focus on your family, focus on your children, focus on life, okay? Don't focus on charts that are sitting at all-time highs unsustainably with no chart structure and then get upset when it washes out okay anyone who bought the dip on Terra Luna today awesome take care of yourself don't get caught up in the narratives it's very important so today's a kind of an unorthodox video I know that you know this isn't the usual video but it needed to be said against all the other content creation out there I know that this is going to be unique I know that this is going to be something that'll resonate with a lot of people if it doesn't resonate with you, that's totally fine. Maybe this channel wasn't designed for you. But the fact that I saw the behavior in the Mastermind community over on our Discord, my Patreon supporters, the way that they've been all acting over the past week is a sign of how I've been running all of this. I'm trying to have a high vibrational mindset in our community. So when these downside moments come, we're prepared emotionally, spiritually, consciously, in all ways, and we're helping each other as opposed to running around like chickens with our head cut off. So final words of wisdom regarding this chart. We do have a back test or double bottom of this exact level on this chart right here for Bitcoin. This needs to hold. Having a rebound from here would probably be very similar to the price action going back to July 
And that was a beautiful time for the Wolf Pack because we were actually growing the channel quite a bit there. Pretty adamant about how the start of August into September would be. That worked out beautifully. This is a retest of these downside levels. Bitcoin needs to hold this. If Bitcoin cannot hold this, we're going to see a massive wipeout and a lot of altcoins to come. So protect your finances if needed. And if you're here for the long term, perhaps this is your opportunity to start you know, looking at how you want to take on this market over the next year. If that confuses you, I also have a Shemitah decoded video, which breaks down the whole year, all of the Shemitah cycles that came before this, focusing on 2008, 2001, and then also a little bit of a narrative about the 1993-1994 bond market crash. So definitely take a look at that if you're interested. But this is actually kind of like what we want to be seeing. Final washout before a spring. And ETH, same story. We're just retesting these areas right here of the lows of January, holding support, actually pretty much back testing and even a slightly lower low. That's to be expected, especially with a volatile stock market. This actually back tested this W, clean W breakout before this high. So all of these levels right here that we're seeing in the top two projects, this is completely normal. As for XRP, XRP, the holders are losing faith. This is clear as day, and I told everyone about this. If this cannot hold the 888 FIB, we're going to have a slide. And when it slides, it needs to hold this red line that I put on the chart, which is $0.44. Cents. So far, we dug all the way down into this backtest level of February. This needs to hold, because if it cannot hold these levels, it's going to break this entire structure, and we're going to see probably $0.20 cent XRP, um, and that could even be isolated. Right now, for XRP holders, you need to be aware that this is a heavily retail-driven coin. It's retail that's moving this coin, not institutions. Institutions are not moving this coin. They're allowing the traders to self-liquidate themselves, and a majority of this coin is held by retail. And then the whales of this coin are Ripple themselves, okay? So any time that we were bullish back last year, it was imperative that people were de-risking. And because of all the narratives that have been built by the XRP army about how this will 100% go, it's definitely made a lot of people, you know, anxious at these times. And they're blaming the government, they're blaming the SEC, they're blaming, blaming, blaming. But in actuality, the reason this price action's happening is because of retail investors panic selling, not actually having the faith in the coin that they once thought they had. So again, I urge everyone, be a more sophisticated investor. When there's blood in the streets, when people are scared, take advantage of that. When people are overly exuberant and happy and have a lot of greed, probably a time to pull some chips off the gambling casino. So we'll see how the rest of today goes. This is a very, very interesting day where I would assume Bitcoin's regaining dominance. Of course it is because all the altcoins are getting shitted on while Bitcoin is actually kind of man maintaining homeostasis. I'd assume as long as the Dow Jones continues to recover slightly with the S&P, we're going to see, you know, the market kind of just chop. It's in a chop zone right now because of the recent Fed meeting and crypto isolated into its bloodbath because of the eclipses. And that's clear as day now proven with Terra Luna. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I appreciate every single one of you, especially those that are over there on Patreon. You guys are incredible. I love every single one of you. And I'm wishing everyone a beautiful rest of your day. I will be doing a live stream this Friday. We will not be talking about the market. <laughs> I wanted to come out and make this video before Friday just to kind of like lay down the law. And let's see how the rest of this week goes. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll catch you this Friday on the live stream. Much love.